Python, in six I have some, and in nine I have some to send me your work. I did receive the work, but I did receive the work from those that I know what they do. I wanted to see from those that I don't know how to do, and I didn't get it from these guys. We are moving on. Next Thursday is the final exam. And the final exam is going to be different than all the finals exams that you have. It's going to be a communal final exam. The class is too large to have it all at once, but I will split it into small groups. The day is having one hour and 40 minutes. I'll split it into smaller groups and you will have some time to be in groups and you will talk among yourselves on the total cumulative amount of material that we have. And Guy is going to be recording everything. And then I'm going to pass everything to everybody. And I would like to get an evaluation from you, but you evaluate everybody else except yourself. And I will take it, and I'm not going to average it, but I will take it into consideration and see if it's fair. And after that, I will pass your grades. So Zaklin would say, what grades would you give me? And I will say, I would not give anyone a D. From those of you who were in the class, if I have a student that I never saw that person in the class, and that person does not have any reason that communicated with me in writing, indicating that is not in a class. And I have few people that as the class progressed, had to go back to work and cannot be able to be here. And for this particular reason, I said, fine, that's not a problem. We will videotape the class and we will send you a video of what is happening in the class. And these guys follow what is happening in the class. And I know that this is happening. These people, they will participate in the final exam and they will get a passing grade. Then I had a couple other people, but I never saw their faces. I don't know what their face looks like. And I don't know how their voice sounds like, but they are in my class list. And they said that when I speak, I cough. <coughs> I do cough. But that's the only thing that I get. Even if somehow they find out what is happening in my class and they send information, I'm going to give them an F. The rest is going to be what I will get from you. And I would like to see you understanding what is happening and the scale is in the syllabus and I want to see how you judge the others. And from that point on, we can move. What do I want you to do, Jerry? Do you see the PowerPoint in front of me that I have here? Yes, because I have it open. Good. You can open it for you. I can open it also. And I want you to tell me if there is any difference between this slide and this slide. I want you to be able to tell me this slide and what is it?
And this slide here. This slide here. And this slide here. Can I have a minute to analyze both charts and then can I come to um, give you an answer? Yes, you do. Thank you. And that's not only for Gary, but it is for everybody. If, in other words, I would have two cases, I have this case here. And I have this case here. Professor, they seem pretty much the same, just the difference in quantity and demand. You heard, Professor? No. I'm putting one next to the other. And Jerry sees more or less the same thing, right? And. Yes, Professor. I mean, besides the, the units and the not and the names, all, everything all equal, uh, I see. Good. And we spent a lot of time discussing the first model, the transshipment problem. We made it from balanced, unbalanced. And we make it from static, dynamic. And we spent a week talking about the first model. And now, from what we have here, I want to go to what is here. But now, my thinking is completely different. What I have to do is I have to allocate different workers to different projects having a potential that each one worker can go to each one project. And what I want to do is I want to make that allocation based upon given preference. If that preference is that I want to control the cost as low as possible, what I need to do is I need to know how much each one of the workers, Adams, Brown, and Cooper, can cost to each one of the projects, project one, project two, and project three. And I want to make the allocation in such a way that the overall cost is going to be the lowest. And we did that also without using a computer. And I want to keep it as a balanced problem. The balanced problem is one worker to be assigned into one project. One worker, here is the supply, can be assigned to one project. And I want to make a model out of that in mathematics and in Mathematica in such a way that I can take that information and I can use it expanding the problem. Last semester, that they had to do the work online and they were at work. I asked them more or less to do the same thing. I said, I have three professors who can teach business to 20. And I don't have only three sections, I have seven sections to be taught, or five sections to be taught. But as your enrollment is coming up, I go on to the dean of the college, and the dean of the college has to make decisions. 
one decision that the dean of the college has to make is open a new section or close a section if i have a section that does not have significant enrollment i want to close that section i want to find out what is significant enrollment i take one of you Jacqueline. she passed the class she's good and she gets an assignment her assignment is how many students do i need to have in my class so the total amount of tuition payment that you will pay will be enough to cover my salary to teach the class and i want the clean to be able to give me an answer and to justify the answer i don't care if the clean is going to use computers or is not going to, is going to do it without computers and i don't care if she's going to use computers what kind of software she is going to use but i want to know a plausible and justifiable argumentation is this clear and that was the first question of the final exam in the last term and if Jacqueline can do it then I assume everyone can be able to do it why do I want to do that because I don't want to open a class or keep a class going that I would not have enough money from those who enter that class to pay the person who is going to teach that class and I'll keep that simple, assuming something that doesn't exist. Not all of you pay exactly the same amount as tuition for a course. And not all of us have exactly the same salary or hourly wage. Different people are paid differently and different students also pay differently. But I will put these variations later on for those who want to do advanced work. I'll keep things simple. Everyone pays the same amount. Everyone is paid the same amount. How many students do I need to have for the class to go? And Zaklin can tell me 10. So if I have X amount of people that want to take business to 20 next semester. And that's not a book problem, that's a real problem. And I have X amount of people who can teach that class next semester. What I do have to do is I do have to make an allocation. And I have to allocate different people to different classes and my question is when I have to evaluate what is the cost why the cost is different from every professor to everyone else or in other words I go to the previous case why and what actually the cost of a person working in a given project is different if i have to go on and see the real case you go to cuny first and you see who is teaching this class and if you go on and you see who is teaching this class i want to know what you can find out did you go to cuny first to look for summer term for business 220 or not yes good how many sections do we have in the summer so i did that prior to this class so i wouldn't remember but and i want to do it for the fall i think it was one for this for this particular summer 
Are you sure? Can you give us a I can't remember when I looked, when I looked a long time ago. I didn't know if I was going to be working or not. So I, I think originally the time was 11 o'clock and it wasn't really good if I was working. But I ended up not working because my hotel closed. But I was looking for alternatives and this is the only one available. Oh. You see my screen, right? Yes, Professor. Yeah, no. So how many sections do we have? I just checked this two, two sections. You see two, why do I see three? Um, I don't know. For this summer it's two. For this time it's two. But if you look at one lady in this class, Gail, she moved from one section to the other because Gail wanted to go from the regular section to the writing intensive section, because she wants to finish and have a writing intensive class. So if you look at this class here, is exactly the same hours as this class here with one specific difference. <coughs> there are some people who besides doing all the work that you do, have to write a report so they can fulfill the writing intensive class. And I had to go through administrative process to take Gail from one section to the other. Did I do that, dear? Gail say yes, but her microphone is not working, so she sends a message. He sent that message message yesterday. You saw it, right? Gail says yes, professor. Then I have two different classes at different hours. When you registered for this class, you didn't know that the other one is opening. All of you are not. Damian. Do I have a student who was registered for my class, but as soon as the second section opened, moved from the first section to the second section? Uh, I believe you said yes, sir. And why Alia that got into the class late, being in the waiting list, didn't go to this section and she came to this section? Uh, choice. You don't know it, let her speak. Because this is my last class to graduate. And why I didn't you take, take the, as as possible. and why didn't you take the other section and you took this one? Because the other one would be at a later time and it would stop my graduation day. And can be any reason that you want. And I want to do exactly the same thing for the next term. I go on and I can modify the search and I can change the term and I can go to the full term. And as I go to the full term, I want to see exactly what is happening here. And I want to see what is going on with the business decision class. And I want to see what is going to be offered. And this is what is offered. And I have to make a decision. Partially, that decision is made. 
partial, but I have staff in two sections. I have staff in two sections and I have to figure out what is happening with the all, all, all other sections. So what do I need to do? Who is going to teach what? And that is determined by what factor? I don't know that. I'm getting out of reality and I go to the model. What is the cost of different person to different case and why that cost is different is something that I want you to be able to tell me. In other words, if I have an adjunct or if I have a full timer, it's going to be the same cost or different cost in money terms. If I have someone that in order to give two hour lecture needs two hour pre preparation or four hour preparation, is it something that you have to count into the cost? And I want Isabel to give me an answer. I don't care how she will do it, but I want to be able to do it. I will go on into this class and I can figure out how much is the enrollment. If I click here, I can see how many people are in this class. And that class that fills 25 people has already 10 people enrolled. I ask Isabel and I see what is happening. She said, start looking for a person. You need a person to teach this class. Then I would have Isabel to figure out another question. Who is going to be this person? If you have more than one, who do you select? And I will go back and I would go and see the results. I have another section. This section has 17 people, which means I have a problem. And I'm passing that problem to the person who took this class and knows how to make decisions. And this is Isabel. I said, I need two people as staff to staff these classes. And I go back into the case. And I want to see something else. If I have a class that I have a name of a professor here, but I already committed that this professor is going to teach this class. If that class does not have 10 people, why 10? Because I asked Zaclin to tell me how many people I need to have so I can have a class. And that class has only four people. What do I do with this class? Do I cancel this class or I let it go? Um, professor, yeah. Yeah. you throw a lot of factors because we can say if it, uh, the professor is part time, full time, then again, how much you're paying this professor, and then again, is the student going to cover the cost for the to pay the professor? Yes, yeah, the student covers the cost to pay for the professor, but that cost to pay for the professor from you may be from your own pocket but from someone else may be from financial aid but for me it's irrelevant if the college will get the money that i will be paid from your pocket or from financial aid if i don't get whatever i need to get to teach the class i'm not going to teach the class i want to make things easy at the beginning each one of you have exactly the same amount of money to pay, which is not the situation. Because if you are out of state or international student, you pay more than what you pay if you are from 
the state of New York. And if you are from New York City, you may have to pay different from what you have to pay from New York State. And if you receive financial aid or scholarship, you may have to pay nothing from pocket, but something is paid to the school. I take all that stuff and I make it as equal. And I take all that stuff and I say, Joseph is an adjunct professor. Christian Rohat and Brett Whistler are full-timer professors. But if the adjunct professor doesn't have enough students, he's going to get a call the last minute that his class is covered, is canceled. If the full-timer does not have enough students in his class, he's going to get a call the last minute saying that this class is canceled. As a result, he takes over another class because as a full-timer, I have to give him a job. And I want all these decisions to be made within less than an hour. But if I want to make all these decisions within less than an hour, I cannot use a clean. A clean can do that slowly with her mind and she can give me an answer. But I want the answer to be fast. I don't want the answer to be in four hours. I want the answer to be in a few minutes. And if I want the answer to be in a few minutes, I have to do something that is important. I'll go on to Aliyah. And I said, Aliyah, did you take this class and you know how to make these decisions with a computer? And Aliyah is going to say, yeah. Okay, then do it. And if Aliyah does it, she's getting paid. If Aliyah doesn't do it, she doesn't have a job. And my former students are able to do that job. And this is the real problems that I'm facing when I have to learn the models I'm going to be discussing with you today. Is this clear? I'm getting out of here. And I want to know one important aspect. What is this number here? This is the cost per person in a project. And a cost per person in a project may be a lot of things. This is the sum up. The oh, other. Yes. Are you presenting on your screen right now? Yes, I do. Are you still on the page that says table 5.3 and project? Yes. Okay, okay. And since you are in a move and you have everything in your cell? Yes, sir. After the class is over and after Guy sends me the video, I will put it in YouTube and you would be able to review it again. Perfect, thank you. And the people who are working right now and cannot be able to do it, that's what they do and they get in touch with me so I know what is happening. But this is the reality. And the reality is I need to make a number that would show what is the cost for someone to do a project and be allocated to the project. And that can be financial or not financial information or how the non-financial information can be turned into a financial information. And as we see it here, we see something that is important. I'm not telling you anything new. And as I present this picture to you, all of you and Gary said something that is important. Gary said, Professor, you don't tell me anything new. You tell me more or less whatever you told me before. You have the same idea in your mind, the same model, but you present it to me in a completely different way. And I want to verify what Gary says. I put one next to the other. Do they look the same? 
and I may say I don't have my glasses. I have to rely on what you say. Damien, do they look the same? Do they look similar? Oh, they look similar, sir. And if Damien says they look similar, I would like to tell him to tell me what exactly they represent one and the other. And I want each one of you to know what is the first model that we had here and what is the second model. The second, you see it first time. The first, you had it for almost a week. And I want each one to be able to tell me what is whatever we covered so far. Taiwa. Taiwa. What did we learn so far? So far, we learned the transshipment problem. We learn it as it is balanced. That's balanced, right? And we learn what is as non-balanced. And yesterday, we play a lot about the alterations of that model. And I want to see the model I want to discuss with you today how three people can be allocated into three projects. If the case is balanced, one person can go to one project, but I may have a different alternatives. If one project can take two people and one person would be interested in working into two projects, how that allocation is going to be made. And I want you to do it with a computer. And I want Alia and uh, Jacqueline to do it without a computer. But I want the answer to be the same. And I am moving ahead. What I really want to do, I take the cost per person the way that I make it, and I put the cost per person in an objective function. The objective function is what? How much each person is costing to be allocated in a given unit. And I don't want to have the picture the way I have it here from the book. I want to make my life easier. What do I want to do? This is what I have. This is my variable. And my variable is something specific. If a person is assigned to a project, the answer is one. If the person is not assigning the project, the answer is two. And what do I want to do? I want the first person to be assigned into any of these projects. And I want the second person to be assigned into any of the other projects. And I want the third person to be assigned into all the other process. What did I do? Damien says, you took something that was in a line, sequential, and you turn it into a different form, in a matrix form, in such a way that every row is the person that can be allocated to all potential projects. And every column is one of the potential projects. And I do that because I want to have my information organized in a clear and neat way. This is not a real matrix. That's a sequential. It's one statement. One is connected to the other. Why do I want to put it this way? Simple, because I want the clean to tell me that the Person A, Adams, has a possibility to be allocated to 
the first, second, or third project. The second person, Brown, can be allocated also to the first, second, and third project. The third person, Coopers, can be allocated to the first, second, or third project. If I look at column-wise, in the first project, I can take either Adam, Brown, and Cooper. In the second project, I can take either Adam, Brown, and Cooper. In the third project, I can take either Adam, Brown, or Cooper. That's my objective. What is the difference? If you go on to BMCC, you have about 1,000 classes. And if you go to BMCC, you have about 2,000 instructors. Or you have 2,000 instructors to be allocated in 6,000 classes. Question, Professor. Yes, Robert. So theoretically, if we took Cooper at 9, Brown at 10, and Adam at six that would be the least expensive cost for your projects practically not theoretically yeah thank you wait wait what did you say which ones okay yes, I, I love when candisa candisa stops no thank you you know really for real all right so look at the, if you look at the if you just like glance at all all of the costs mm -hmm. if you took cooper you notice that cooper is she is nine while brown is cheap at 10 and adam is cheap at six and then you look at that you're covering all the projects you can okay. cover all three with the cheapest cost by doing right. that That's, yeah that makes that makes sense or let's go on step by step where are you going to put adams Kadisa, where are you going to allocate Adams? Project one or three? Three? <clears throat> Good. Kadisa allocates Adams to project three. And I agree with her. And I will make a nice color here for that part. It's not that good, so I will make it different. So Adams goes to project three. <clears throat> By putting Adams to project three, you already dealt with project three. You thought row wise. Now I want Kadisa to think column wise. For project three, who is cheaper? For project three, who is cheaper? Adams, it's, Brown, or Cooper? It's still, it's still Adams. So that's why Kadisa says Project 3 and Adams, from both points of view, should go to Project 3. We got him here, locked. What is the remaining thing to do? We have to figure out Project 1 and Project 2. So what we need to do is we need to pay attention only to this area. Because Adams and Project 3 are out of the picture. And my question is, who goes where? If you look Cooper at Brown, on one. If you look at Brown, Brown is cheaper in project one. Would you put Brown in project one? No. Who said no? Me. You're gonna get an A, right? Why you're not gonna put Brown in project one? If you look project one, Brown is cheaper in project one. Brown is cheaper both ways. What is happening with Brown? It's cheaper than spending. 
So wh who, who is going on to project two? Brown or Cooper? Brown for two and Cooper for one. The question is if Brown is cheaper to project one and project two, where are you gonna put Brown? Cannot go to two projects and needs to go only to project one. Is Brown going to go to project two or project one? Project two. Why? <laughs> Why? Project Why? Um, because there's a greater it's, distance. If you were to no. choose eight, uh, if you were to choose the cheaper one for Brown being eight and then twelve. That would altogether cost 20, but if you chose 10, which is too higher for Brown, and then nine for um, C, I forgot his name, sorry. Um, okay. It would be 19 okay. compared to 20. So what do you have to do at the end? Go you ahead. would choose, uh, you would assign uh, C to the first project. You can assign C to the first project. Is this guy going to be assigned here, Aliyah? Yes. Why? What do Just, you gain? I'm sorry? What do you gain? It's cheaper overall cost. Because this is the option that you have the overall cost. You solve the problem without having to do anything with computers, right? So, Professor? Yes. So is Brown going to be in one and Cooper in two or? I Brown don't know. You can put him okay. anywhere you want as long as you have the lowest cost. Yeah, I think that's that's better. Brown in one and Cooper in two and what I'm, what, what I'm looking at. Do you know why I teach you that stuff? Because I don't want to do it. I want you to do it. And I want you to do it with computers because now it's an easy case. But if you have 1,000 people in 5,000 courses to be allocated and you need to make a decision the last day of enrollment, the first day of classes, so you can figure out who is going to be where, you don't have time to go step by step without having a computer and you need a computer. And when you have a computer, you have also to deal with a domino effect. What is the domino effect? If I'm a full timer and I'm senior and my class is empty and I don't teach this class and guy is a part timer and his class is full, guy is out and I'm in because I need to take his class because I am the senior and I am the tenure. And if Damien is also tenured professor, but I am senior than Damien, and Damien has his class full, but I have a class empty and my class is canceled, then I go on and take his class. And he goes to the next case that he has to do it. So what do we have? We have a lot of interrelated problems that I want to solve and I don't have time. And I want that solution to be very fast and I want that to be accurate. How is the model that I have? The model is what we said before. We said before that we have supply nodes. What is the supply node? Every person. Why do we have it as a negative? Because this is what it gives. Do we need to have it as a negative? No. If I take the negative signs from both, I have exactly the same situation as if I had negative. And this is another alternative that I can do it and get exactly the same results. What do I have? I have Adam that can go on and be allocated into any of the three cases, but he needs to be allocated into one. If Adam can be allocated into two or three, 
or more than one or less than three, I can be able to have it as an inequality here. In my Mathematica files, I give that to you as a dynamic problem. And dynamic problem can play things around. What do I have here? This row that I have here is exactly as the column that I have in this matrix here. Pay attention to what is happening. The row and the column is the same. We call that process trans transposed. When a column becomes a row, then we have a matrix that is transposed. We change the orientation of the matrix. What do we have here? We have demand equation. What do we demand for project one? How many people I want in project one? One. Who can be allocated to project one? Abram, Adams, Brown, or Cooper? Same thing in all the other cases. And I move on into my modeling. I go into my modeling and I can see what do I want to do? I want to get the lowest cost. I go on into the files I sent you. Where are the files I sent you? And you go on in the files I send you and see what is happening with that case. I don't have to spend more time. I send you that case. Do I want to solve another problem? Another type of a model is to have the maximum flow model. What is a maximum flow model? Do I face it at my school? Erica wants to get out of BMCC and go to Baruch. Guy is not sure if he wants to go to Baruch or he wants to go to Brooklyn College. Everybody gets into the college and wants to get out of the college. What do I want to do? I want to have as many people as possible getting into the college and graduating. And I want that to be done as fast as possible. What do I do for that? Do I have anyone here who is enrolled into ASAP problem program? I am professor. Why? Because the um, tools that they provide you with are very, have been very useful for me throughout my college experience. And why do we have the ASAP program? To assist students who are in need to ensure that they can get their degree within a two year period um, at BMCC. Good. Does it cost in money terms more than any other programs? In other words, in no, I believe it's terms. free of cost. What do you mean? I believe ASAP is free of cost. I don't think I pay for ASAP. It's, it's if you qualify. You don't pay. Does the school have cost because of that? Yes, they do. In other words, you go to the ASAP, you don't pay anything. You don't go, go to the ASAP, you do not buy your books. They give you money for your books. You go to the ASAP, they give you money for travel. And you don't pay anything. Why do we spend that much money? Alia. Why does the school pay that much money to fund ASAP, you ask? Yeah. Why? Because it's going to benefit them in the long run. Because a whole bunch of other students are going to hear about it in other schools and they're going to want to sponsor ASAP as well. 
good. And is it to the advantage of my class that I got Aliyah in my class? Of course. And this is what I want to do. I don't want only to see the monetary aspect. I want to see the overall case. And I don't want only to minimize the cost. I want to maximize the flow and I want as many people to get in and get out, but I don't want them to drop the class. I want them to move on and get transferred to Baruch or get transferred to Brooklyn or go to any other places. What do I want to do? I want to see what is an idea of a path. And the idea of a path is that you get into the entry point and get into the exit point. You have an entry point and you have an exit point. And you have different ways to go from one to the other. And as you have different ways to go from one point to the other point, you have different connections. Uh, slightly different, but the same way to represent the information is with directed flows. Now I have one way and two way streets. And not only I have one way and two way streets, but my roads, my arcs, my flows have different capacity. So what do I have here? Point one is related to point two. How? 300 units can go from point one to point two, but only 100 units can return to point one. More people can move this way, less people can move that way. What do I have in this case? My model is how some traffic can move in from one point to the other point. How many cars can move in from east to west, from west to east. And I have the nodes that are the connectors and I have the arc, the capacity of how many cars are in each one of the flow. What do I want to do? I want to be able to move as many as from point one to point six in such a way that they will go back. I want to see how many people they will go from the business management program to the Baruch's finance program and from business administration program to Baruch's international business program. And I want to see if someone would come back. I advised one of my students last night, she is out of BMCC and she didn't take management at BMCC. She plans to take management at Baruch next fall. And we were talking and she is a good student and I know her. I want her in my class. What did I say? Go on and get an e-permit and take this class with BMCC, with me. Can she do it? Can you be in Baruch and take a class at BMCC? Yes, Professor. Same way that you can be at BMCC and take a class in Baruch. You can go back and forth. The important thing is how much you move all the way to the direction that you have. So what do you have? Point one is connected with point four. How? Directly. 200 units can go from point one to point four. But point one to point four is connected indirectly also. Is connected indirectly through point two. So you can go from point one to point two and from point two to point four. But the total flow you have this way is different than if you have the direct flow. Or you can go from point one to point three and from point three to point four. And if I want to get the maximum flow out of point one to point four, I have 
three alternatives. I have the direct connection and I have the indirect connection. If I want to stop my thinking there and I want to find out how much traffic can go to point four from point one, what can you tell me? 200 units go directly. 300 units go to three, but only 100 units from three can go to four. So 200 units and 100 unit makes it so far 300 units. 100 units can go to three, but only three can go to four, which means at four, 600 units can go from one. The rest have to move on. And this is how I would like you to be able to look at this particular case. If I look at this particular case, what do I want to do? I want to see what I have to model. And what I have to model is find out the variable that tells me how many cars they can move from one place to the other. And as I do it, I'll go back to my model and I make one point clear. Given I have everything that is moving throughout the system, but I said, I want everything to return back. If I want everything to return back, I want to find an artificial flow, an artificial arc. I call it a dummy because in reality it doesn't exist, but I want to capture that activity in actual terms that will allow from number six node to go back to number one. And this is my dummy arc. My dummy arc is the amount of flow that starts from point six and goes to point one. What did I do here? I alter the order of the subscript and that is a problem. I need to leave the subscript in the right order because the first subscript test identifies, denotes an origin and the second one denotes a destination when we want to put things in a matrix form. Always we have to put things in order from origin to destination. Therefore, this particular arc indicates a direction and the direction is important. That means that from six, everybody goes back to one and I want you go on and model the case. What do I need to model? I want to get the maximum amount of flow that can return back from a given network. But if I take the network, I need to look for all the nodes. And for every node, I need to have an equation. Actually, this light, as I give it to you here, is formatted slightly different than the slide that you have in your computer. Because I put everything in given form, in given order. What do I have here? Here is a flow that goes in one direction from six goes to one and from two goes to one. I go on and look at it. Here, I have what it returns back. What it returns back to one from six directly can go back to one or from six indirectly can go only through two. From six can go to two and go to one or from six can go to four, can go to two and can go to one, or from six cannot go to five, from six cannot go through three, 
these are the alternatives I have. What do I want you to do? Think about direct and indirect flows. Is this clear, Alia? Yes, sir. So in other words, when I talk about direct and indirect, I refer direct and indirect to flows, not to nodes, to arcs, how the arcs are connected through the nodes. And I go on and I see what is happening with my case. This is the return. From the return, I have to subtract what it moves forward. From one, I go to two. From one, I go to three. From one, I go to four. I look at it again. Professor, are you presenting your screen? From one, I go to two. From one, I go to four. From one, I go to three. This is outflows from one outflows from one which means they get out of one i need to subtract it the inflows to one is from two and from six what do i want to do i want to take the inflow and i want to look at it the outflow and i want that to be balanced if from the inflow this is coming in this is coming in. And this is going out. Whatever goes on, out. And whatever goes in needs to be equal. In order to be equal is equivalent. If I subtract one from the other, it's zero. What do I have here? I have a balancing situation. Why is it balancing? Because it's equal. If I want to say that something that gets in is more than what it gets out, then is unbalanced. And if I want to say that something that goes out is more than what it gets in, is also unbalanced. But when I have unbalanced situations, I have to think about another idea that in my decision analysis, I can find it later on, which is what is happening with inventories. If whatever it gets in is more than what it gets out, that I built inventories. If whatever is getting out, is more than what I have in. And I have inventories, then I decrease my inventories. If whatever gets in is exactly the same that when it gets out, then it's a balanced situation. What do I say with these balancing notes that everything that is getting out of any point is getting into that point, that means allows the two-way street. What do I need to do? I need my capacity to be defined. How do I define my capacity? With these numbers that I have here, and these are in hundreds. So this is 100 units can go from two to one. 200 units can go from one to two. What is happening? The flow from one to two is double to the flow from two to one. And I need to specify the capacity of the flow in my model. If I do that, I can solve and I can find the solution. But that's not the only way I can do it. In this model here, I want to do the maximum capacity the maximum flow. But besides the maximum flow, I want to have a different problem. And the problem is, I want to have the shortest path. What is the shortest path? 
I want within two years or less, Alia, get in BMCC, get out of BMCC, transfer successfully to a Uniston College, and not spend more than two years at BMCC. Is this feasible? And is this doable? Yes. When? When someone is looking after Alia, that's her advisor. And when I communicate with her advisor and her advisor communicates with me. As a result, we pay more attention to Alia than we pay to the rest of you. But when Alia has all that pressure, she knows that she's, she has to move up, she has to improve, and she has to be better than anybody else. Is this helping you? And the answer is yes, because I can turn and I can say, if Alia can do it with some push, some pull, and some help, you can be able to do it. And you can be able to get the push, the pull, and the help. Or you can do it on your own. What do I have here? Same idea, different objective. Now my objective is to have the shortest path in that particular connections I have. How do we do that? We go to degree works. Have you ever go to your degree works? In your degree works, what do we do? We have a path. From what course you can go to what course so you can move on and can go from a point one entrance to the school to point two, exit of the school, the fastest way. If you need to do it in fastest way, what do you have to do? You need to pay attention to how the network is working. I'm looking at my network. What is the network? From the factory, I want to move something to a warehouse as fast as possible. What do I need to do? I have different routes. What Google Maps is doing, it takes that model and puts it into your computer and solves it all the time. What do you want to do? You want to go from point A to point B as fast as possible. I have a question. I'll give you an answer. So it's saying you want to get to point A to point B from from as, as shortly as possible, but you want it to be a supply of only 100? Is that what it's asking? This is not the supply, this is the distance. Okay. In that case here is the distance that point one and point two is related. So you want to go from point one, A, to point six. From the factory so it's just to asking. the so it's just asking whichever one, whichever one has a direct path will be the shortest path? I want to find out the shortest path. Can you tell me the shortest path as you look at your cell phone from point one, one to point six? How do you go? At every point, you look at what alternative you have and you select the one that is closer. From point one, where do you go? To two or three? You can go from one to two or one to three. Which one do you prefer? Either or, they're the same. Oh, no, no, one, one to two is a shorter distance. So you go to two. And at point two, you have an alternative to go to three, four, and five. Where do you go? Two to five. You go from two to five? No, two to three. Two yeah. to three, no. why? And the numbers are easy, so you can make simple case from yeah. Two to, yes, two to five is two to half of what is from two to four. From two to three is half of what is from two to five, or fourth oh. of what is from two to four. Obviously, if you are in two, what choice do you select to go Wait. here? Do you have a choice here? No, you five. can come forward. Yeah. But if you are here, do you have a choice to go to six? Yeah. You can go either directly 
or you can go indirectly. When do you select to go indirectly? When the path is shorter. When the path is shorter directly, you go directly. <coughs> what is the answer? The answer is from one that, that to, two, to three to five and six. This is what the computer will give you. How do you model that case? Similar to the others. You need to find out what kind of nodes are connected with the arcs. <coughs> and one is, one is if the arc is used, two is if the arc is not used. And I go on and I see at what is happening here. <coughs> what is my objective? My objective is <coughs> to go as fast as possible. Going as fast as possible. I have everything in sequential terms but I don't want to write it in sequential terms. I want to write it in organized terms. So from one, I go out. And from two, I go out. And from two, I go out. And from three, I move out. And from four, I move out. And from five, I move out. And from six, I move out. As I have it here. I want to see how things are happening. And I want to organize it in a very specific way that I can go from one, I can go from one to two. I can go from one to two and I can go to three. I take it, I put particular tabs and as I put particular tabs I want to organize it in a very neat way I want to go to three from one I want to go to five I want to go to five from four, I go to two, I go to five, and I go to six. From five, I go to four, and I go to six. And put it here. And from six, I can go to four, and I can go to five. What did I do? I reorganized my information from a sequential form to a matrix form. What is the matrix form? This goes to two. This goes to five. What is a matrix form? Row wise, I indicate what is the origin the first line the first line starts from what it comes from one and it goes to one and three the second line starts from what it comes from two and goes to column wise to first third fourth and fifth the next line starts from three and goes to one, three, and five.
the following line starts from four and goes to two, five, and six. The next line starts from five and goes to three, two, four, and five. Actually, that must be altered to go here from five. It should be at that point and have it done that way if I did not do any mistake in the process of typing. Guys from Cyprus, this last site should be Plus here. Professor. Yes, sir. Um, what is the benefit? Yes, so what is the benefit of rearranging the the whole um, movement and that in that particular way the way the way you just did it? If you have a large set of data, you can be able to find out if you have any mistakes in the data entry. Because row give you the origin and colors give you the destination. And if you have a large set of data, you go back to your graph and you can figure out what exactly is going on. And then you go on to put what is happening of every node. Again, the same idea. We have the outflow. What goes out is related to what comes in. And what goes out is related to what goes in in all the nodes. But in node one, you have a different case that node six. In node six, you have a different case. And in all the other nodes, you have something that is similar. Let's see what is happening here. Everything that gets out is related to everything that gets to in node two. We have zero. Why? Because we have a balanced situation. If we get in and we get out, we don't stay at that particular point. What is happening if this is a point of origin. A point of origin is node one. We depart from the point of origin. And as we depart of point of origin, we want to indicate that we leave from that point. But here is the point of destination. We arrive in that point of destination. So by having this minus one and this plus one, we specify from where we start and where we end that particular flow. What do we want to do? We define what is happening with the flow. What do we want to achieve? We want to achieve the minimum distance of that particular flow. How do we do it? Simple. We go from every node to the other possible nodes that we have, having our objective in our mind. And our objective is in our mind is what is my current alternatives. At node one, we have alternatives two. We choose the fastest one, we go to two. At node two, we have three alternatives. We choose the one that is closest, smaller distance. We go to three. At node three, we don't have an alternative. We move to node four. At node five, we do have an alternative. We move to the closest one, six. Fortunately, this is what we want to do. 
and I go to you. Did the college treat you fairly when you enrolled for my class? Or not? Damien. Damien. Did the college treat you fairly? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. You didn't have that much of a problem as much as Gail had. Gail needs to graduate. In order to graduate, she needs writing intensive. Did the college treat you fairly by giving you the option to go to a class that was not writing intensive? Gail. What would happen if you couldn't have a chance to move from one section to the other? And Gail was lucky because another person said that I need to graduate, I have to work, but I don't want to take another class. If this professor can give this class as a writing intensive and I can write a project for that. So we open a section that is writing intensive. But Gail didn't know about it. Damien, did you know that you have another option to take another section? Uh, yes, sir, I knew. And why you are here and not there? Uh, because I like the time slot. That's one choice. Any other reason? Robert, yeah. didn't know, Robert didn't know about the other class. What time was that class? Five o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, it's still, yeah, still a problem. If I were working, they both would have been a problem. So what do I want you to know? We have preferences with respect to time. And the preferences with respect to time define the objective function that yields to what is the outcome. I go to one class or the other class. And I would assume another person could go one or the other and got into this class, the last one, like Gary. Jerry, did you know that there is another section? I think, I, well, I don't remember, but I think they will have multiple um, sessions. But then again, like you mentioned, the time. I feel, I feel like a lot of students prefer early classes. So you're about to see a lot more students in the morning than the evening, I would say. So that will become a barrier as well, I think, when it comes to timing. Good, and I had a student who was in the morning class and moved to the afternoon class. And he communicated with me and he said, Professor, do you mind if I shift? And I said, not at all. I wouldn't mind if half of you shift to the other class. Why didn't you move? You didn't know. Why didn't you move? You didn't know more about it. Do you know what is going to happen for the fall? No, Professor. Oh, well, I do already. I know already. One of my former students who has a one-year-old son sent me a message yesterday. She said, I'm going to be at Baruch. Do you know if the classes would be online or not online classes? Because if the classes would be online classes, I would like to be where my husband is. But if my classes would be in real time, I cannot be where my husband is, and I want to be with my husband, not with my mother. And this is a different objective. Like what? A different objective. Aliyah, do you have a multiple choice test in this class? No. 
But if you were in the afternoon class, you have to make a presentation and you're tested with multiple choices. Which one is easier? This one for me. But for someone else, maybe the multiple choice. And because of that, different preferences go to different choices. And the models we have here allow me to move on to different cases. What I want to do more. I will pass the next case to you. And we will move to different cases that we have options. I will pass the chapter for you so you can be able to read it. The time is up to move. And today I wanted to give you the basic ideas of those models that we will look at how we can be able to solve in Mathematica and turn them to be dynamic models so we can have things done. This is going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, we are going to have the online